I want to get to where I can show you how we can add color to our black vector as well. But there's still lots to show you within Illustrator that can be helpful for your process. So right now, I want to understand all of these different vector paths I've created. I showed you how I could use the shape tool to create a path, and then how I could use Pathfinder to merge those shapes together to get a more complex shape. So I'm going to use that same merge function on these two paths, which are overlapping each other, right? In order to make them come together. And I do that by selecting them both. I can hold down Shift or Command, click on each of them with either the large selection tool or the small selection tool. As long as I'm clicking in the middle instead of on individual anchor points. Once they're both selected, I go to Pathfinder and I click on, they call it Unite, but it's merging. And now it's one shape. I have one shape here. I have one shape here. That's making my logo. Now, I need to cut out. I need to cut out this kind of crescent moon shape, and I need to cut out a circle. It's a great example of where I can use the circle tool, hold down shift to get a perfect circle, use my arrow keys to really place it exactly where I want it. And I can use the large selection tool as well. And I can transform it. And I can just place it exactly. Right. Now, for just simplicity's sake, I'm going to turn this shape into a white shape. But for our black shape logos, we don't want any white shapes. But so that I can see what it looks like, making it a white shape on top of black shows you where I want to punch it out. Make sense? And for simplicity's sake, though you don't need to do this, I'm going to select all of those. I might as well move my crown too. All of these so far, and I'm going to move them onto the gray background, off of the white artboard and onto this gray. Because I don't want there to be any white. I want there just to be black shapes. So now this is how you use Pathfinder to punch out a foreground shape from a shape behind it. I select them both. They're overlapping. I go to the Pathfinder tool. I can find it under Window. And I do the next function, which they call minus. So you have Unite. And if I click Unite right now, the whole thing will turn white and that I will disappear. That's because Unite will take whatever the layer is on the top, the topmost path. It will make everything match that path and blend into it. Command Z. But if I use minus, it will take away whatever is on top from whatever is underneath it. The thing to remember with minus, it's incredibly useful, but it's designed to cut one path from one path. So if you have multiple paths you want to cut through, you want to merge those multiple paths first into one path and then cut through it. Or in Cullen's case, where we had to take like a stripe that we wanted to cut out from multiple paths that weren't overlapping, we had to make duplicates of that stripe to cut one out from each of those paths because it's a one-to-one -one kind of thing. Now I can do the exact same thing, get practice by doing it for, oh, I'm not on the sketch anymore. <laughs> That's why. For the stripe. So let me move all this back onto my sketch. Line up that eye. I keep hitting return to place, but you don't need to do that in Illustrator. All right, so now I need to make this shape. And just for simplicity's sake, this is what I recommend. Make a new layer, lock the layer underneath. And on this new layer, let's see if they have a crescent moon shape. They don't. But I'm going to show you something really fancy. I can make a circle. Hold down shift, make it a perfect circle. 
then I can duplicate it, Command C, Command V, not duplicate, but copy paste it. Make that one white that's on top. Use the large selection tool to move that in place until I get kind of the shape of the this crescent I want, right? I can also shrink it holding down shift or enlarge it depending on how big I want this crescent to be. And then I can simply select both of them holding shift. They're both selected and then I can just minus the white from the black. Right? Then I can take that new black one and I can use that large selection tool and I can, it's a more complex shape now, I can rotate it, I can place it exactly where I want it, and for simplicity's sake, just so you can understand, I'm going to turn that to white, even though it doesn't need to be, it just needs to be a separate path. And, and it shouldn't have any strokes on it. And I'm going to select what's underneath it. So it's this white shape now on top, but I want to punch it out. So to do that, I select them both. You know, both the white shape and what's underneath, and then I minus one from the other. Ah, why did it do that? Because this is a separate layer. Remember, minus does one to one. So it minus everything except for the lowest one. So instead, Command Z, I just have to select my crescent and then my bird. It's going to all but it. And then I can, I don't know why I keep selecting the crown. I'm going to select the bird this time, and then with command, select the moon. So now it's just those two. And now when I minus, it cuts out the moon from the bird. Okay, so that's one option. But then I have the other sketch option. Where the crown's the same, but I want to minus out this whole shape from the black. So it's actually going to look a little different. Let's see. It's going to look like a lot of curves with a circle that's going to be black. So I'm going to lock these paths. I'm just trying to show you some different ways. And we'll learn more on the next assignment. And then turn them off. They are locked. Make a new layer just for my own organization. And I'll start with the circle. That's easy enough using the shape tool. So I've used the pen tool and I've used the shape tool so far to make paths. And I've always had the stroke turned off. Now I'm going to use a tool called the pencil tool. And you'll find it underneath the brush. Don't ever use the paintbrush tool. Not for me. The paintbrush tool works with strokes. We're going to learn how to use what's called the blob brush, which I much prefer. <laughs> which makes fill paths instead, but we'll do that on our next assignment. So the pencil tool is my favorite tool in Illustrator, and you're gonna soon see why. First of all, it's like a free form pen tool, a pen tool where you can just click and drag. And as long as you end where you started, it will close the path. But notice how many anchor points it plots, probably way more than you need. So what's great about the pen tool or pencil tool is you can double click on it and you can set it to be either more accurate or more smooth. And this works beautifully with your tablet. And so far, Illustrator was initially developed before there were tablets. So the pen tool is made to be used with just a mouse. In fact, it's pretty painful to use the pen tool with a tablet because of all the exact clicking and pointing and dragging. But with a tablet, that's when the pencil tool came in. If I set it to be more smooth than accurate, no matter how shaky my hand is, it's going to simplify the anchor points and give me kind of graceful curves. Doesn't mean it's going to be exactly what I want, but this is why it's my favorite.
I'll set it back to be slightly more accurate for subtlety because these are like magic scissors now. If I turn that into a, a fill shape, now what I can do is if as long as I start on the path and end on the path, I can tweak it. I can extend it and change it. And it will re-render it for me. Okay, I'm going to, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make that white. Yes, yeah, you need to see the anchor points in order to redo it. So if I want to make like a little horn on this, I have to start on the path. For good measure, I usually draw through an anchor point and then draw through an anchor point to show that I'm back on. What happens if you miss that? Well, if you start off the path, even if you end on it, well, that was close enough, I guess. <laughs> but often, it can just create its own path. So it's a little, little picky, but very, very helpful. Okay, I've now filled that in with white. I'll turn the bird on underneath it. And now what I'm going to do is use the large selection tool. Because my sketch doesn't match my vector. And now, with the layers behind it locked so I don't accidentally change those paths, now I can use this pencil tool and reshape it. And I can do it section by section if I want. And I can use my arrow keys to kind of nudge it in. Like how thick do I want that line? And I can extend it. I can taper it off. So let's say about like that. Okay, now because I want both options, I want this option and I want another option, I'm going to first finish off this one because there's something I want to change. I'm going to use the pencil tool to just redraw the profile of this head a little. So I can see the anchor points, I stay on the path, and I just clean it up. Just like that. Also, there's a tool called the smooth tool, which should be underneath the pencil tool. And if it's not, click on the three dots, find it. It looks like a blending stump for like those of you who work with charcoal. Click on it and move it into your your pencil tool. I was having trouble doing that with a student and it just showed up at the bottom. But as long as you can use the smooth tool, it's great. As long as you don't overuse it, what it does is it just averages out your curves. Sometimes it will make an extra anchor point, but like when I'm trying to get that head to just be a simple curve, this is a great way to just smooth it up. It won't create new paths like the pencil tool. Okay, so now I like this, so that's ready. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to make sure nothing is locked, everything's turned on. I'm going to select all of this, holding down shift. I'm going to put it into a new layer. So I'm going to make a new layer. Yeah. This is where I'm using the tablet and it's tricky to point, so I'm going to use my trackpad. Make a new layer. I want to select all the finished black vectors that are combined across these two layers. Move those both just by clicking and dragging into this new layer. So when I turn that layer off, everything should turn off. So it almost moved it all. I just need to move the crown now. Okay, now it's all in that one layer. I did that, so then I can select that whole layer, Command C, lock it, turn it off on this new layer, or make a new layer on top of that, and then say Edit, Paste in Place. And now this is the one I'm going to modify with my white skull. Okay, so. What do I do? I'm going to lock the eyeball 